In today's video, I'm using some easy at-home macro tricks to create some dazzling abstract photos just like these. I've absolutely loved taking these photos. Seeing those swirling colors, those amazing patterns is absolutely incredible. And it's that seeing the different side of something that always makes me so excited about doing macro photography. So if you've never tried this technique before, then I definitely advise you to give it a go. Because the great thing is, it's dead easy to do and you can do it at home. So it's a great one to do if it's absolutely hammering down with rain outside and you just cannot be bothered picking up your kit bag and going outside. So we're gonna be taking photos of soap bubbles, which I have done before on this channel, but I've somewhat refined my technique a little bit to get the more abstract photos that we're seeing today. But if you haven't seen that video, I will leave a link to it in the description below. So do go over and check that one as well, as it will probably have a little bit more detail about the setup process. But the setup is pretty similar here today, so let's take a quick look. So this is the setup that I'm using here today. And as you can see, I've got this big light setup over the top because getting that nice lighting on your bubble is all about having a big light source. So it really looks like it's wrapping around your bubble. So I'm using a big, large strip box over the top. And I've also put in a piece of diffusion material just to make that light even softer and spread out more. If you don't have this roll of paper, then you can just use a white sheet and you can fire a speed light at it from the top. As long as you've got your light off camera, positioned above, that is what you need. Below the sheet is where the camera is and of course where our bubbles will be. So let's take a look at those. So the bubble mixture I'm using is just pretty much washing up liquid and water and with a little bit of vegetable glycerin that I got from Amazon. That just thickens it up and it helps those bubbles last a bit longer. Gives you a little bit more time to get your focus and get your shots before they pop. But I've decanted some of that mixture into this little shot glass on the top. Um, just makes it a little bit easier to control where those bubbles are. And I've attached some straws together so that I can very easily blow my bubbles from a distance. Camera is of course on a tripod and I'm using my 100mm macro lens, but I've also got an extension tube on there, which is just gonna help me focus even closer to the lens. And it's that that's gonna let me absolutely fill the frame with those swirling patterns rather than just take photos of the bubble from a distance. Settings wise, I'm at ISO about 200, about 200th of a second for my shutter speed. My aperture is somewhere around F20. It's quite a narrow aperture, but the idea is that I wanna get as much of the bubbles surface in focus as I can. So shooting at something like f2.8, it's gonna give you a very narrow slither of focus, and that's not really what we're going for here. But using such a narrow aperture does mean you need to put out more power from your light, and that is why this kind of shot does rely more on using flashes that put out more power than using LEDs. Certainly getting a, a similar shot using a small handheld LED panel probably isn't going to be as possible. But if you have tried it and you've got good results, do make sure to share them with me as I would be very interested to see how you get on with that. Okay, enough chatter, let's actually start taking a shot. I do have to crouch somewhat to get in under this lighting, so it actually really is helping that I'm using a EOS R5 with a flip out screen for this because live view is important. But we're ready to go. So I get my long straw. And we do <laughs> Well, that wasn't the same end I used yesterday. And we've created a lovely bubble. As you can see, we've made quite a big bubble because I want a larger surface for all those colors to swirl across. Gives us a chance to really focus in, filling the frame with those patterns. But you can see because of that glittering, it really stays around for quite a while. And if we just blow the bubble, it moves around, all those colors swirl even more. Also found it quite handy just to blow down the straw, sort of direct where those colors swirl. There's so much amazing swirling colors on this. So once they're there, that's when we move the camera around a little bit, trying to find those focus points. Once you do see the colors moving, it becomes much easier to focus because you can actually see where to focus on. 
Oh, lovely. There we go, we fill it up nice and big. Usually in the first few seconds, it's not that dramatic, the colors and the swirling. It's once it starts to dry out a little bit that those colors become a little bit more vibrant and you see a bit more contrast and pattern going on. Let's give it a little blow. Oh yeah. And we start taking our shots. Oh, some beautiful colors here. Oh, those swirls. It is so beautiful. Absolutely love doing this. I just love watching it as well. I have to record a long clip and just put it as like a screensaver for my Apple TV or something to start playing. It's so hypnotic. You go, nice big bubble, get off focus, and then just wait for those colors to change. We can probably encourage it by blowing a bit. There we go. <gasps> Look at that, it's so psychedelic. I love it. And you just fire away. Oh, yes. Look at that. Then all you need to do is just keep on blowing more bubbles and shooting away. The more you take, the more swirls you will get. Every single one is unique. You cannot blow the same bubble twice. You will not see the same swirls twice. So the more you do, the more amazing photos you might be able to get. But it's only part of the story. The next stuff comes in Lightroom. So let's head over there now. So over in Lightroom, I've imported the photos that I've taken. I've got rid of the ones that didn't work. And honestly, I am absolutely obsessed with these. I love it. Every single one is unique and it only exists for that split second because then the swirls move on and it's gone. So there's something so fleeting about these images, something so dreamlike that I love. Some of these look like shots of nebulas deep in space, or maybe it's a close-up view of neurons in the brain, or I don't know, but just something really spectacular um, about them. I particularly really like um, this one here, because we've just got these two little things here, which, to be honest, could be sperm. Um, so it, it almost looks like a, a scientific um, shot of sperm on the way to do their thing, perhaps. Um, but these, you know, these, these could be shots of um, those recent NASA shots of the surface of, um, of Jupiter. I've done some wider ones as well that show more of, of the bubble, um, much more like I did uh, in my first bubble video. So, um, you know, if you like the look of, of these, again, every single one has got the swirling patterns, but um, I wanted to try something different because these are very just clearly photos of bubbles, um, much as they're really nice and I love the um, the effects that we've got here. Um, it was very much like this close-up that I wanted to achieve and really I'm so pleased with how these have come out. They look really, really good. But I did want to show how I would do some processing um, on these because um, they do need a little bit of, of livening up, um, but it's pretty simple to do, to be honest. So let's just take a look at, say, um, let's go with this one. First thing I'm going to do is just up that exposure. And we're going to up that contrast, but it's pretty much down to the dehaze. We add a little bit of that, and suddenly, as I do, look how those colors suddenly get so much more vibrant. We add a bit of clarity in there, too. It's going to help define some of those swirling patterns, and you can adjust to taste, really. You know, we can increase those shadows a little bit. We can uh, bring down those highlights, upping the whites as well. If I just pulse that white up and down a bit, you can just see how much more vivid and vibrant these are. And suddenly, that's pretty much our shot. I don't really do anything else. If we go and have a look at, um, at this one here, look at our before, I haven't really changed anything. The photo hasn't changed, but what I've done is really ramp up that contrast, ramp up that uh, uh, those whites, those um, the, the dehaze and the clarity again. And it's really sort of brought to life those different swirls um, in a way that was kind of lost before. I also cropped off the top and bottom to really focus in um, on, the sh on this, um, uh, this stuff itself. But again, with this one as well, this is our before, this is our after. So it's really been about adding that um, that contrast and clarity to let these different small elements really stand out. 
Um, but yeah, once you do, everything just absolutely comes to life. And I love it. I cannot do enough of these. I'm gonna do some more. I'm gonna do more in video. I absolutely love it. Haven't done anything to this. Again, very, very easy. Up that exposure straight away. We've got more going on. Bit of contrast down here. Bit of dehaze. Not too much on this one. And a bit of a little bit of clarity too. And then up those shadows. Bring down those highlights. And I think that looks really nice. And that was a few seconds. You know, it's all it really takes. Um, so it's really about capturing these moments, capturing these swirls in camera. Um, but when you do spend the time and you see how different every single one looks you just get some absolutely incredible results. I've already been exporting these, sending them to my friends. They're gonna get loads more. They will be sick to death of seeing these photos, but I'm really, really pleased um, with what they look like. So I definitely recommend giving this technique a go if you haven't already. If you're interested in macro, this is a great one to experiment with. But it does bring me to an end. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video, then do please make sure to give it a like and do consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.